So a metabolically healthy person, why they might have a low HDL. So uh, HDL is our good cholesterol, and typically it, it's opposite of triglycerides. So triglycerides are usually the fats in our bloodstream. As triglycerides go up, the body processes um, um, with a couple different enzymes and produces uh, or, or um, uh, metabolizes HDL. So HDL goes down in the, in the setting of high LDL or VLDL or VLDL or triglycerides. So low HDL is of interest, but we don't fully understand why some people are walking around with very low HDLs. And we tried to treat this. We used niacin, a B vitamin. We've used fibrates. We've used uh, uh, other agents called CETP inhibitors. And no matter what we do, for these patients who have very low HDL, we can't seem to improve their cardiovascular outcomes by at least changing it with therapies. Now, exercise, diet uh, may, may have some impact, but, but we don't, I don't think we have the full answer on low HDL. But to be clear, just to not confuse this issue, we only studied patients who had high HDL in this study because that was a sign of good metabolic health. So HDL, good cholesterol goes up, triglycerides are going down, and LDL for, for in these patients are going significantly higher, and that's who we studied. What do I? Oh, very low HDL is below 40, I'm sorry. So uh, the definition of low HDL is 40. So as we lower HDL below 40, as, as people are born with or have HDL below 40, that's considered abnormally low. Um, and there are some people walking around with HDL, the good cholesterol, that's, that takes the plaque, that takes the cholesterol back into the liver for excretion, so there are people walking around with HDLs of 20, which is very, very low. And those people usually have disease. That's, that's not metabolically healthy. And I would say, obviously, longer and larger is always better. But I think five years with an extreme LDL elevation, remember, these are not modest changes. These are LDLs on average of 272. This is, this is very, very high, a normal for, a, for asymptomatic people is 130. This is more than double that on average. And we had people triple that and quadruple that. So I agree it would be great to have longer term follow up and we're, we're talking about trying to do that and to have even longer follow up in these patients to, to continue to see what happens over time. But I think five years is not insignificant. I think five years of a very high exposure is atherosclerosis can start to form. Triglycerides are very variable. So triglycerides do tend to go up and down uh, uh, related to uh, carbohydrates in your diet and other things. So yeah, it's not like a perfect linear line, but overall, as you continue this journey, your LDL, um, um, your, your triglycerides should continue to drop and your HDL should overall continue to go up. But yeah, it might not be a perfectly straight line. It's a problem I face. I'm a preventive cardiologist, so I see these patients in my practice. I became interested because I have patients like this. I have patients who come to see me who have very high LDLs, but they look great, they're thin, they have, they have other, no other risk factors for heart disease, and should they be on lifelong statins? Should I tell them to quit the keto diet and go back to something more moderate because they're having this LDL increase, or is this LDL increase okay? And the literature, is pretty scarce, right? We don't have good data. So I was just trying to answer a clinical question, and I think we're starting to get those answers now. Again, thank you to the Citizen Science Foundation.